It's how a guy with a thick accent and a superhuman physique and no money or connections hustled his way to becoming one of the biggest stars in the world. Most people don't stand out because they don't have the schma. Arnold Schwarzenegger's movies have grossed more than $4 billion worldwide at box offices. He's earned hundreds of millions of dollars through upfront salaries and back-end profit participation. At the peak of his career, he consistently earned $20 to $30 million per movie. There is a word that he uses in the Netflix mini docuseries that just came out. It's worth watching. I recommend it. It's called Schma, Schma, S-C-H-M-A-H. Throughout this film, he's like, I was doing the Schma, Schma. What is Schma? It is an Austrian-German idiom that Arnold Schwarzenegger translates as bull****. This is to describe his efforts at self-promotion at each stage of his career. The famous scene from his breakout 1977 bodybuilding documentary, Pumping Iron, when he compares the titular activity to having sex with a woman, that was schma, he now says. Driving a Hummer and smoking a cigar to look like a stud, that's schma. It's how a guy with a thick accent and a superhuman physique and no money or connections hustled his way to becoming one of the biggest stars in the world, one of the highest grossing actors of all time. He was averaging 20 to $30 million a movie at the peak of his career. Incredible. Schma is using steroids. Everyone was doing it, apparently. Schma explains his Reagan-era arms race with Sylvester Stallone, his rival for the ultimate cinematic action hero. Both of them were just trying to outdo the other guy. It's schma. It's bravado. It's a shtick. It's salesmanship. It's a way to sell something. And he always, things were larger than life. He was a great promoter. There are so many lessons for personal branding and for marketing if you watch this documentary. If you just look at his life, it's wild too because all of the success he had was based on manifestation. It's a very Joe Dispenza situation when he's a teenager in his bedroom looking at the posters of the bodybuilder that he idolized and he said, I want to be big. I'm going to move to America. I'm going to be larger than life. I'm going to win the championship. Mr. Universe he starts doing a little bicep curl there in the bedroom. There's no music on. It's not a gym. He just starts there and he's going to get up at 5 a.m. and train every day. I've got a vision of what I want to be. His whole life going from a champion bodybuilder to one of the highest paid actors of all time to the governor of California. These are three very different areas where he found over tons of hard work and a lot of strategy, great success, unparalleled. And he was an immigrant with a thick accent incredible and a lot of it's the schma so the schma i've been thinking about this in relation to your own business or brand or product you have to have that playful ability to promote it in a way that's slightly larger than life and sometimes this works i mean being more meek can work depending on what you're selling because if you do like a robert green style you're not going to appear at the theater every weekend because then they will tire of you there's nothing novel about that But with Schwarzenegger, it was quite the opposite. He was very much like, I'm at the theater. Here I am. I am the biggest. The other thing was interesting is you would think Terminator 2 Judgment Day was his highest grossing movie of all time. It wasn't. It was Twins with Danny DeVito. So Ivan Reitman approached Schwarzenegger and they were negotiating the deal. And Arnold said, I'm not taking payments for the movie. I want my pay from back end points. So they agreed to get 45% of the movie paid out after it was released and the studio could produce the movie for 18 million after the release it fetched 216 million at theaters alone resounding success and arnold earned up to 35 to 40 million dollars just from that movie it's because he negotiated at the beginning and he said actually i want to be paid on the back end this reminds me of the bethany clause bethany frankel the michael jordan of housewives the goat of reality tv Super strategic, brilliant businesswoman. Been on the cover of Forbes by no accident. When she signed on for the first season of Real Housewives of New York, she said, hey, Bravo, I know I don't have much now, but I just need to redline this one part of the contract where it says that you would take a percentage of any brand or product that I sell as a result of the show. I need you to take that out. I'm keeping 100%. They're like, that's fine. All you're doing is selling vegan muffins. I'm sure nothing will come of this anyway. Manhattan moms. That's called the Bethany Clause because Bravo lost out on so much of skinny girl not only the cocktails but the entire brand and product line and everything she's done pretty much as a result of housewives bravo said now we have a bethany clause anybody going on reality tv has to give a percentage of whatever products they're selling which everyone's doing skincare liquor 
especially beauty products now, they have to give a percentage to the powers that be being Bravo, the network putting the show on. Bethany Frankel was the last one that didn't have to do that. According to Forbes, Bethany sold Skinny Girl liquor to Beam for a reported $100 million in 2011. Here's the thing. Ingeniously, she kept the rights to the Skinny Girl name so she could launch other products under the brand. She retained the rights to her own brand. She sold the liquor piece for $100 million. So Arnold, Bethany, masterminds at business. This negotiation stuff is huge. And you know, they're inextricably linked. Hollywood advertising, media. And the other thing about media is that it's the best way to promote anything you do. If you do some schma like Arnold, you could be wildly successful. But knowing that media has ultimate reach for the least amount of money is the key. If you look at Kylie Cosmetics, I mean, billion dollar business, media is the thing. It's about creating your own content. So if you do videos, if you do podcasts, if you do even just social media content that's text-based, Think about the reach that has and the cost it takes to produce it. You cannot buy that many impressions for anywhere near as little money. If you wanted to have a million impressions on a video, old days, you're uh, putting out a 30-second spot and you're paying cost per impression. Same thing with newspapers. Same thing with display ads on blogs. But if you have your own media, which everyone can freely, that's social media, put out Instagram reel. This is what celebrities are doing. This is why comedians all have podcasts. They're not beholden to studios. They have control over their own destiny. Media is the best lever you can pull when it comes to business. You can pull other levers like other people's money, investors. You can pull the lever of code, which is infinitely scalable but can be expensive. Or you can pull media, which is the least expensive and the most scalable, making your own content. That's why everybody's doing it. Most people don't stand out because they don't have the schma. It worked for Arnold. Bigger and better and bolder, highly successful. I don't know that it works for women. Different things appeal coming from women versus men when we look at the world. But a little schma can go a long way. The key thing with the schma is you have to really wholeheartedly believe in what you're doing and in yourself. And if you do, they will. If you've enjoyed this episode, make sure that you thumb it up, rate, review, subscribe. All the links to do so are at emilybender.com slash podcast. This podcast is also on YouTube. If you haven't seen the videos yet, go check those out. Something new that I've been trying. Thanks for listening, guys. Yeah.